All right, praise the Lord, everybody. Thank God for God is blessed. Amen. Christ by him coming, giving his life. Amen. Save mankind in tonight. We are thankful for the love to come back. Worship him and thank him and glorify him. Looking forward to what God's going to do this wonderful evening. Amen. As we stand to our feet tonight, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Let's come expecting, believing God. That he'll do something awesome in this service tonight. As we come with our cups uplifted before him, truly he's more than able to meet every need here in the house of the Lord. Father, we thank you, God, for allowing us to be back one more night. God, here in your service, God, allow us to come and worship you tonight. And we just thank for your grace and your mercy this evening. God, your protection, your love, God, as you cover us with this night. And God, we ask you, Lord, to, God, just accomplish your divine will. God, meet every need in this service. God, draw many women under you. God, we pray. God, just have the divine will be done this service. God, we give you glory, God, for all that you do. Four seventy nine of your songbooks. The song says, "Lily of the Valley." He is that very thing tonight. That bright morning star, amen. The fairest of ten thousand to our soul. Truly, we serve a mighty God tonight.
answer tonight in our world today. Amen. Mason 481.
great time of year to get saved. Amen. Great time of year. Anyone to reflect upon who Christ Jesus is, who He is, the Savior of the world. We pray that if you will make Christmas in this season, take some time out to reflect on Him, what this season is all about. To remember, uh, for our country, and our world, our communities, in various places, all about your home, wherever it may be, to focus in on Jesus. Amen. Make this holiday about Him. season. So we encourage you to do that. We encourage you to look to Christ. And when all else fades away, money's gone, the houses are gone, family's gone. Again, you left standing. Make sure you have Christ. Amen. That's the most valuable thing. Greatest gift of all. Start off right, so trust in God. So, come with us. Sunday morning, we to start off right. Lord willing, Lord willing, we'll be here for another year. Truly, God is good to us. Let's make it a better year. Amen. God, every day, every day, it should get better. Amen. God, so we look forward to that as well. So, that's kind of the schedule coming up. You know what? Again, we, we see the, the power of God and how it can heal the heart of men and women. So we continue to lift up the DS family, continue to lift up the Jones family as well as they uh, uh, continue to uh, Mr. Dennison. Uh, again, his situation is great. And so we trust in God. And again, you got to be with him and the family going forward. And so many other prayers. So many other prayers and needs that perhaps you have tonight. God is more than able to meet those needs. Amen. Truly, God is good. Amen. We good to go? Sound is working? All right. Good, good, good. All right. We thank God for his goodness. This type of singing songs unto the Lord. She prepares. It's important. You let your day, the Bible says, sing spiritual song. It'll keep you along the way. So many things going on in the world. Does something for the soul. It's good for the soul. And again, we encourage you to do that. Amen. Is he safe with the Lord?
Amen. You good? Amen. A God of the breakthrough. Amen. Truly, he says, show me something that he cannot do. Amen. And truly, there is nothing he cannot do. Amen. The only thing he cannot do is fail tonight. And so, we're truly grateful to God, the God of breakthrough. Amen. If you're looking for breakthrough, amen, God is able to do it in your life. If you want breakthrough, he's able to do it in your life. And so, look to him. Look to him. Amen. And truly, he can uh, meet your every need. Amen. As we look to him tonight. Truly, truly, he is just that tonight. We want to uh, come out of the book of Hebrews this evening as a, as a touch of scripture here. We've we'll got some others to join in with it. We'll use this tonight as our main text this wonderful evening. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, we'll look at 1 and 2, 1 and 2. Some Bible scholars out there, you may be familiar with this scripture. And if others, maybe not as much, but we hope to make it clear about tonight. The Bible says, wherefore seen we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us say, lay aside every weight and sin which does see easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that is set before him, he said, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of God, of the throne of God. He sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. I'll read verse 2 again as I text this evening. He says, let us look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. So tonight, as you think about that, we... Many of uh, come with various scriptures. We even use that as about look under Jesus, various things. But I want to uh, use a, a popular phraseology, I guess, over the past few years about look at God. Look at God. Amen. You ever heard it use that statement before? Anybody ever use it? Look at God. Look at God. Sometimes it's in the sign of amazement or if it's in the sign of uh, uh, just, just, just a satisfaction of perhaps God coming through once again. God coming through, or God showing Himself real, God doing an awesome work, God just proving Himself to be real. As we uh, was sharing about praying for those that are traveling, I mean, my, my, my sister in law, she's probably in the, in the air now, right? And just the day before, the day before, she's like, I don't know, I'm gonna be in my flight, being in counseling, and all the day, and all the, all the storm, all, all, blah, 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 blah. My wife said, just have some faith. <laughs> Have some faith that you'll be able to fly out of here. And that's she's up in the air now, so you're gonna be able to hear this right now, but look at God. Look at God. And so on and on and on, you look over your life and you say, Man, look at God. Look how awesome that he is. Look how mighty that he is. Look how he does and moves in a mighty way. Just from the morning, when you get up in the morning and see that sun come up one more time, you say, Man, look at God. You can see the wonderful sunrise, or if you're blessed to be able to see a sunset, and sometimes you say, man, look at God. Look at God and the hand of God, the, the nature and all of the splendor that it has, the beauty that God has, the good beauty of who he is, the things in which he does. And, and if we open our eyes to really see that, we'll see how God over and over and over again has come through. Even if you're not even saved tonight, you truly have to know that there is a God. There's truly times, again, when God has really come through on your behalf when we didn't deserve it, when we were so unworthy. But we can look back and say, man, look at God. Look at God and how awesome that he is. Again, prior to this chapter in chapter 11, as we briefly touched the other day about the Hall of Faith, it's really a rundown of uh, again, if you want to find out some of the events or get a quick synopsis of what the Bible is and some of the stories, go back and read chapter 11, and it will give you a rundown of some of the major highlights in the Word of God. And, and the, the writer here uh, in chapter 12 told us about these clouds of witnesses in verse 1. These clouds of witnesses, he was referring back to chapter 11. Chapter 11 showed us all the things and a lot of the things in which God had done. He had plucked out just a few major events in which God just showed himself real. From the time of which Adam actually a miraculous uh, 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 creation of man and the miraculous uh, things in which he did for Abraham. He went through Noah. He went through Moses. 
he went through Sarah's birth, uh, the birth and giving the child when she was unable to have children. On and on and on from Samson all the way through. You go back and read it. Again, you'll say, you can look at it and say, man, look at God. Look at God. He was letting the, the readers here know in the book of Hebrews just to look at God. There's no excuse why many women would not serve him. There's no excuse why many women would not trust him. My friend Dave, we encourage you to look at God. I, I shared with him yesterday at the, at the cemetery. I said, hey, you lost your earthly father. But thanks be unto God, we have a heavenly father. The earthly father tried to do all he could for them. Give, shout them with whatever they needed. And to try to be there for them throughout their life. And there was, that was a common theme running throughout it. About how that he was blessed. He blessed them with gifts, shoes that they needed, phones, all these different things that they needed. On and on and on, but I, I, again, I thought about the Savior, Joy, what about our Heavenly Father? Who's able to give even much more than what material things can do. Much more than what materialistic things man and we as fathers and mothers can provide. What we as can give gifts to one another. But there's something about our Heavenly Father up in heaven. Who gives great, great gifts from above. And so, again, chapter 11, we just begin to summarize some of the things in which God can do. It summarized how his love was expressed to them. Man, look at God. We are all witnesses of God's love tonight. All witnesses of his love and how his compassion. We shouldn't even be here tonight. As the writer says, he says his, his, his compassion and fell in not. Great is his faithfulness to us. Where would we be without the love of God tonight? If he didn't love you, he wouldn't be here tonight. If he didn't love you, he wouldn't have allowed you to live this long. But thanks be unto God tonight for his love. In his grace and his mercy. Throughout chapter 11, it shows us his power as well. Look at God and his power. He showed them and explained to them how God had done many miraculous things on the part of the Red Sea to fighting back many, many multitudes of armies. He said, look at God. Look at God. He showed them God's grace even through it all. It was so undeserving. So undeserving of God's grace. He showed them and how God many times overlooked and forgave them of their sins. And because he's a gracious God, I don't know about you, but we need God's grace every day. Look at God. We even see God's wrath in this as well. Amen. And we cannot overlook God's wrath as well. Again, because the God of, of, of love is the same God that hates sin. The same God of heaven is the same God that no doubt uh, created hell for the devil and his angels. You see today, there's, again, we have to look at all facets of God. Again, we were saying about him, even the sermon yesterday, and how that again, uh, again, they like to look at the fluffy side of it all, naturally, naturally, to lift up spirits. But there's also another side that we have to look at as well. We cannot overlook the, the penalty of sin, the penalty of judgment and wrath. And so, after we look at this, the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. So we look at it all and say, you know what? I want to be on the right side of God tonight. I want to be on God's side. I want to be in his favor. I want to be on, on his, in his love and his mercy today. We also see, even from that chapter, we see how the chapter 11 it talked about God's forgiveness and promises that he gives to you and I. The promises to the believer over and over and over again. And you can look back and say, yes, God's word is true tonight. The promises of God. <clears throat> Surely we can say as well. And they can say as well. Look at God. This chapter shows again how that God is able to do all things. Again, he cannot fail. There's nothing that he cannot do. And so let's go back to Hebrews 12. 1. <clears throat> he says, therefore, let our men come past about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us stay aside every way. And every sin that so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. He talked about how that again God is God that we look to. Him. Look to Him and see how that God is able. How God is a forgiving God we share. How God is a gracious God. He said, lay it all down. Sin has an end to it. Uh, it has a destructive end to it tonight. It would not satisfy the soul. And so He tells us, let us look to Jesus. Let us look to the Lord. They can't satisfy the soul. Look at God who's able to supply every need. Look at God who's able to love you and save. And who's able to do great things. Nothing compared 
to what the enemy does to souls today. He destroys lives. He destroys homes. He destroys families. Men and women today, we encourage you to turn to Jesus tonight. The Bible says, look unto Jesus number two. Let's look unto him tonight. Look unto the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible says he was there in the beginning. In the beginning, if you go to Hosea, but if you peek back into the beginning, he was there. You will see Jesus. And throughout the present, he's here. And even in the future, he will be there standing on the right hand of the Father tonight. You can't get away from looking to God tonight. My friend, hey, let's look to him, the author and the finisher of our faith. Today, again, as you say, for the joy, he went and gave up his life. For the joy, he endured the cross. And for despising the shame, he was set down now on the right hand of the Father. And so let's, let's move a little further. I'll come back to in a minute. Luke chapter thir- uh, 130. The Bible tells us how that we are to look to God. Look to God and see how awesome that he is. And so in this season that we're in, this Christmas season that we're in, uh, they was instructed to look to God. To look to him. The angel of the Lord said unto uh, Mary, he said, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor. And behold, thou shalt conceive a womb, and I will and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he said, Behold, look, look, Mary, this is what's going on. This is what's happening. Look to God. Watch what God does. He's going to come. He's going to save the people. He's going to forgive them. He's going to be the Savior of the world. He's going to, it will come to pass. 32, he says, Mary, look at this. He's going to be great. How many know God is great tonight? When you look to him tonight, you'll see his greatness. When you look to him, he shows his greatness. He shall be the son of the highest. No other name, no other one can be compared to him. No one else can uh, again do the things that he can do. The Bible says that the Lord shall give him unto him the throne of the fathers of David. Look at God. He's sitting up, uh, in, up high in heaven as we speak right now. Amen. The earth is his footstool, brothers and sisters, tonight. Look at God. The Bible says in 33, he went on and says, He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. The kingdom shall have no end. I want you to know in the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, it does not matter. Our God is able. There is no end to his kingdom. When it's all said and done, when the dust settles, when the book of Revelation has, has done its final part and all the scriptures have been fulfilled, you're going to say, man, look at God. Look at the Son of God. Look at him high and lifted up. Church of the day, look to him now, my friends and I. The Bible says it will come to pass here. He told Mary, the Bible says in 34, and Mary said unto the angel, how shall this be seen? I know no man. And the angel said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come and be with thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore the holy thing which is born shall be called the Son of God. I'm getting out of where I want to go. The Bible says, behold, the cousin of Elizabeth, she shall conceive a son in her old age as well. And in the sixth month with her, she uh, shall be where she was buried. So the Bible goes on a little further. I'm going to spill on in a minute. The Bible says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. He was saying, just look to God. Watch what I do. I'm telling you today, he says, nothing shall be impossible. Do you believe it tonight? Do you believe it tonight that nothing shall be impossible? When we look to God in this fashion, when we look to God and say, this cannot be, she says, how can this be? No doubt Elizabeth wanted the same thing, how can this be? But we have to look back and say, look at God. Don't put anything past him tonight. Don't put anything that's too hard. He told us there is nothing that is uh, too hard for him to do. There's nothing impossible that he cannot do. And don't put anything past him tonight. Uh, again, the Bible goes on to says in the 38 and Mary uh, said behold the maiden of the Lord he says be it according to the word and the angel departed and in verse 39 the Bible says she arose and went to, on a hill and, and, and into the city of Judah and the Bible says she entered into the house of Zach- Zacharias and, went and saluted Elizabeth the one who was also pregnant as we shared with you earlier <clears throat> Again, this whole story, again, of the Christmas season, we encourage you to go back and read it. Again, how this miraculous birth came to pass. 
We serve each other there by how don't try to figure it all out, no, regardless of how it looks, how it feels, or how it may seem tonight. Just look at God tonight. The Bible tells us, and so how can these things be? And it begin to come to pass. He told Elizabeth, you're going to have a baby. He told Mary, you're going to have a baby. He told these people it was going to come to pass, and it came to pass. And look at God tonight. The Bible says now these two pregnant women came together. They came in the same presence of one another. And the Bible says, and in verse 41, it came to pass that when Elizabeth had heard this, she had heard that she, uh, Mary had approached the house. The Bible says, it came to pass that Elizabeth heard the salutations of Mary and the babe, John the Baptist, we call John the Baptist. The Bible says he leaped in his mother's womb. He uh, 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 was filled with the Holy Ghost. This little infant baby, this infant child, I saw a billboard earlier today. It was a little picture of a little baby. And it talked about uh, God is real. There is a God. And it was an uh, anti-abortion type of billboard. And you know what? It was letting us know that God is the creator of all things. Life begins at conception. And so this life knew that the Son of God was in the presence of him. And John, I can only imagine him as a six-month-old baby, begin to kick himself and elbow his mom. He began to leap in his mother's womb and say, hey, I, I want to see this Jesus. I want to see him, even though I'm just a baby. But he knew in his heart and his soul that God was real. He knew the presence of God, my friend, today. Even that infant knew the power of God, my friend. Don't sit here numb tonight. Don't sit here uh, again unmoved tonight. Look at God. I'm telling this infant baby, which can show all of us the presence of God is real tonight. The power of God in his presence is real. Look at God tonight. Look at God. And John and this baby, he grew up and became witness of the Savior of the world. The prophecy was fulfilled. You go back and read it. How the John became a witness, just like he told his father. He would, and even the prophets of old said he would be a forerunner, preaching one crying in the wilderness, preaching repentance. Amen. And for men to come to know Jesus Christ. So he was the forerunner. This prophecy was fulfilled. Look at God. The Old Testament prophecies now were being uh, unfolded right there in their eyes. And brothers and sisters today, the prophecies even to come are unfolding and will unfold. As sure as we see it tonight, it will happen. Open your eyes and see. Look to God tonight. The Bible says in John 1, 29, the Bible says, the Gospel of John 1, 29, the next day, now they were adults. The Bible says that John, the one who leaped into Elizabeth's womb, the Bible says he sees Jesus coming. He saw Jesus coming down where he, uh, again in that city. And the Bible says, he said, behold, in other words, look, behold the son or the lamb of God that does what? Takes away the sins of the world. He said, look at God, the lamb, the lamb of all that God tonight. When you look at the lamb tonight, I was thinking, have you seen this song tonight? Now behold the lamb. Behold the lamb tonight, the lamb, the, the sacrifice, the one, the innocent sacrifice that would take away the sins of the world. My friend today, the sinful world, I'm telling you, look to the lamb tonight. Look to Jesus, my friend today, while he still tarries. Look to the Lord our God today while there's still time. But men will continue to look to the economy. Will you continue to look at your job, on your houses, and your cars? Do we continue to look to Hollywood to keep us satisfied? We continue to look to a government or will we look to God? Will we look to God? Some things coming, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you. That probably will blow our, our minds away. And perhaps that's what will get me and women to look to God. But I pray it will not be too late. I pray that it will not be too late before our nation starts to look to God. We need to look to Him now. Look to Him now while it's still time. While again, there's still hope. Again, while there's still opportunity to be saved. In Psalms 40, 16, Psalms 40, 16, the Bible says, let us, let all of those that seek thee rejoice. He said, those that seek God, he said, let them rejoice. It's a joy serving Christ. It's a joy knowing Jesus Christ. It really is. It's a joy knowing we lay down at night. Amen. It's all right. And when you go throughout your day, even when things are upside down, it's going to work itself out. Because I'm going to look at God. The Bible says, he said, we can rejoice and be glad in thee. 
Let us love uh, thy salvation, saith continually. He said, love Jesus, love salvation, love serving God continually. It should never be a burnout, amen? Never ever get burnt out in God. Love him every day of your life. Serve him with gladness, serve him all the days of your life continually. Again, when in your darkest days, look back, take yourself back to the altar. Take yourself back to that day when you gave your life to Christ. Take yourself back to that day when you said, oh, I thank God I called on Jesus one day. My friend today, he says, rejoice in salvation. Rejoice in the Lord. Our God, there are people in the living countries today, that's all they got is salvation. They have a hut, it's a fire, a campfire, a couple of little things. They don't have internet. They don't have the fineries of life. They don't have automobiles. They don't have shopping malls. They don't have grocery stores. But you know what? They have Jesus. Because a missionary is someone that's gone there to tell them about him. In church today, you know what? They live a satisfied life. Because it's, they rejoice in salvation. They praise God. They glorify God. They worship God. Many of them will put us to shame because of their relationship with God. Because they, they pray to God looking for the next meal. They pray to God depending on the water that they drink. They pray to God that he'll supply their need day after day to be their daily bread. And tonight, my friend, let's look to God. Look to God tonight. You guys all right over there? The Bible says, he said, the Lord be magnified. Look to God. Do we magnify him tonight? Do we magnify him? You think about a magnifying glass and how it becomes bigger. The Bible says magnify the Lord. Magnify him to glorify him. To make him bigger than anything else in this world. To make him stronger and mightier. To magnify him. To glorify him. The Lord our God. Verse 17 says, but, the, but I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. He said, you know, outside of all the things that I don't have, he said, the Lord thinketh about me. That relationship was more valuable than anything that he could ever be given. Silver and gold, friends, family, loved one. He said, God thinks about me. God is mindful of me. God cared about me. God cared about you. He said, man, look at God. Look at God. He said, thou art my help. He said, he thought about me in my troubled times. He thought about me when I was ready to commit suicide. He thought about me when I was ready to give up. He thought about me. And I'm still here standing here today is what the psalmist say. Look at God. This man, perhaps a nobody, at that moment in time, God chose his prayer and his song to place it there. To the world, no doubt he felt insignificant as he wrote this, perhaps. I sound poor and needy. He said, but look at God, my helper, my deliverer. Look at God, how he delivered me. We serve you chapter 11. At time after time, church, even Sunday morning, I believe Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and all these others, how I think God delivered, and Moses was delivered, the children of Israel were delivered, and naturally they wrote in here and said, Look at God. Look at God, how good it is. If you ever been delivered before from a time of need in your life, not only just salvation, but time is over time after time. God has delivered and supplied needs. He said, Make no tearing. Oh my God. Let's go to the move on up further. Colossians 3 1. He said, If you be risen with Christ, seek those things above. Look to God. If you name the name of Christ, we believe God. Let's believe God. He said, We seek those things that are above. My wife said last night, Have faith. Trust God. Let's do that. Amen. How many going to do that with us? He said, We believe that Christ is risen. The same Jesus can do great things. The same Jesus can supply. The same Jesus can, again, uh, provide and, 
and get delivered. God, that same God can come through again. He says, look to him where he sits on the right hand of God. Look up, look up, look up. Look up, world. Look up to Jesus tonight. Look up to the heavens tonight. He says, set your affections on things above and not on the earth. These things will pass away. He said, let us get look to God tonight. Look at God. He said, if you're dead and your life is hidden in Christ, uh, in God. Where Christ was our life. He's our life. He's our everything. Is what he's saying. He's our life. Our life giver. So I say everything tonight shall appear. He will appear again, brothers and sisters, tonight. How are you looking at God? The Bible says, and then he shall appear with him in glory. That's the blessed hope we have. That one day the entire world will see and behold the Lord our God. I can only imagine how it was when those angels in the host of heaven appeared up in glory when Jesus came the first time. All the heavenly hosts, and they sang and they worshiped. No doubt as they saw the Son of God there in the manger. He will appear again in the clouds. Appear with God again. And we can as well as we look to him in glory. Look to God. Look at that blessed hope. The world puts their hope in something that will fade away. But we have something that will never ever fade away tonight. Put your hope in something that will I never pass away. That endures forever. Look at God tonight. I'm reminded of a man named Stephen as we try to wrap this up. A man named Stephen, he was one of the uh, selected uh, the apostles after the death of Judas. As the church began to grow and some other selected men out. And uh, he was selected, and the Bible says he answered the call of God. One, and he lived for God along the way after he gave his life to Christ. The Bible says, look up at Acts 6 3. The Bible says, Wherefore, brethren, I uh, look ye out among seven men, honest, of report, honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom I appoint over this business. So naturally, the church was beginning to grow up that Jesus had left. The Bible says that they began to look for some men. They looked for some people of honest report, some good people. And the Bible says, uh, again, but but you will uh, give ourselves who will give themselves continually. That's what they would give themselves continually, and, and that's they were looking for people that would give themselves continually to God. The Bible says, and to minister the word. And number five, it says, and saying the, the, the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because why did they choose him? Because he knew how to look to God. God wants each of us. To use each of us. Men and women full of faith. Let's believe God. How many going to do that? Let's look to God tonight. This man was a man that looked to God. The reason why I bring this up is because I'm talking about how the, the Lord will come again in glory. And, and so he preached the word and, and he believed the word and he was not afraid to speak the word with bold as he preached about the kingdom and salvation. And as he was doing this, the Bible says the people got angry and they wanted to stone Stephen. They wanted to stone him. But he couldn't worry about them. He had to worry about God. And the Bible says, look what it says. The Bible says in 54, 754. He says, and when they heard these things, they were cut in their hearts. And they gnashed them with their teeth. They were angry because Stephen had told them to repent. He had told them to change. He had told them to get right with God, the Bible says. And they got angry at him. They picked up stones and wanted to kill him. But naturally, the Bible says, but he being full of the Holy Ghost. Look steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. You see that? He saw Jesus in the midst of his trial, in the midst of his, his hardship, in the midst of the persecution. He looked up. He looked up and he saw Jesus. He, he no doubt and probably was wondering as he prayed and he probably was to his amazement. He saw Jesus up in the throne of God. He probably said, man, look at God. Look at God in all of this. And the Bible says in verse 66, he said, Behold, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. He said, I see the God that loves me. I see Jesus. He no doubt in his mind 
and say, oh, thank you, Jesus, for being there. And the Bible says in verse 57, the Bible says, uh, how they, and he, he said they cried with a loud voice. They cried out with a loud voice. They wouldn't, And they stopped their ears and said, shut up, preacher, shut up. And they ran and they took these stones in one accord and they, 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 they cast them out of the city. Verse 55, 58, excuse me. And they stoned him and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet. His name was Saul. Look at God. They killed this man. They was killing this man with stones. And they took the man's clothes and they threw them at this man named Saul. And the Bible says they stoned Stephen and called and, and Stephen called upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. In the midst of it all, in the midst of the hardships of life, look at God. Look at God. What's he come through? You may have experienced it before how God came through. You may be needing that right now for God to come through. I'm telling you, look at God. Stephen looked up. He said, man, I see God. The Bible says he kneeled and, and he cried with a loud voice. It says, Lord, lay not their sins to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep and he died. And you go back and read, go back and read. I'm not going to go through it all. But the Bible says in the next chapter, how did I get these, these, this man named Saul, the clay, they took his clothes and threw it at Saul's feet, the man who was consenting upon him. The man who authorized this stoning will be the next man who will pick up the torch and preach the gospel. And one time this man was against God, he, he authorized this man to die. But look at God. And now we see, and some believe he wrote the book of Hebrews, he, he, wrote, many, he wrote the majority of the New Testament, and the Bible says how the he was now changed and how God has spoken to his heart. You see, God can turn any heart around, whoever you may be tonight. You're looking at people here in this room, or again, uh, uh, perhaps you may be one yourself, or you've heard of others who, who, who again, who are away from Christ, who did not know Jesus as their Lord and their Savior, and how they say, man, their lives have been transformed, how God is able to take their lives from, from the guttermost to the uttermost, how God is able to transform it and stop the cursing tongue, stop the, the filthy heart tonight. I'm telling you, there's a God that can do that tonight. There's a God that can forgive all sins. A God that, that will take you out of the barroom and put you in the church. There's a God who, again, will kind of stop running the streets and, and chasing after the women or men. And now you begin to chase after souls to see them reach for Christ. You must use your mouth for, again, to use it for ungodliness. Now you use it to preach the word of God. That's the type of God we serve. And God can turn around lives of men and women. Perhaps it's going on something going on in your life tonight. You say, preacher, a relationship problem or a family problem, I'm telling you, pray, seek God. Watch God turn it around. I believe it, Carlos. We're going to pray and believe God. Amen? We believe God that God can turn it around. And I believe that as time goes on, we're going to say, look at God. If you believe with us. There are times in which things go on in life. And you can take, write it down even as we speak. Tonight, be full of faith. This man that they were afraid, he's a terror. The Bible says in the next chapter, Saul wreaked havoc in the church. But a couple of chapters later, he was now preaching for the church. Look at God. Brothers and today, as she comes up, the Bible tells us, say, we see so many clouds of witnesses. Go back to Hebrews on as we close. He said, we see so many clouds of witnesses. It's over and over and over again. Not enough paper, not enough ink, not enough time. To tell you all the things that God has done. The church today says we, uh, we see these clouds of witnesses. So let's lay aside every way and sin. We're so easy to beset us. Run with patience, which is said before, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The author and the finisher of our faith. In Philippians 2 9. The Bible says we look to him. And this same man who uh, he said he sits on the right hand of the Father. As we speak right now, in verse 2, he, he, we, we look to him. And here, he, the Bible tells us how that one day, again, as he sits high tonight, in verse uh, Philippians 2 9, he says, Wherefore, God has highly exalted him. He has highly exalted Jesus above all the frame. But they nailed him to the cross. Again, they could not keep him. The grave cannot keep him tonight. The slander and the, the, the piercing and the pulling of the beard, the spitting in his face, the cursing, and the blood that was shed cannot keep him. He said, we, 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 God has highly exalted him. He's risen tonight. He 
He's risen. And he now sits in the throne room of our Heavenly Father. The Bible says that his name is given above every name. Every name. He said, Mary, his name is going to be called Jesus. His name is going to be called Jesus. Another place says his name is Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Everywhere you go, you can't get away from him. You see God all over the place. Look at God's life. His name is above every name, Emmanuel, Prince of Peace. The Bible tells us, he says, 12, he says, the name is, and at that name, every knee should bow. Every knee should bow and every tongue. Uh, whether it's in heaven and in the earth or under the earth, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everyone that's ever walked his face of the earth and wherever else it may be, in the angelic world as well, he said they will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. They will say he is Lord. They will all have to bow before him. Amen. And behold his beauty and, and, and his glory. He says here tonight, look to him now. Look at God. Look at God, my friend. See him now. Serve him now. Follow after him now. Look to him. Our country, our city, our world your individual family, whoever you may be, like, look at God. Look to God. Call on Him. Bow before Him. Exalt Him. Magnify Him. Trust Him. Believe Him. Let Him forgive you. Let Him uh, turn your life around. Whatever your need is. Let Him heal you. Let Him uh, deliver. Whatever it is tonight. There are many things we can't even list tonight. But look at God. Look to Him. He's willing to help He's willing to help. He's willing to help. He'll pick you up and turn your life around. He's willing to do this. He's willing. He's willing. He's willing tonight. Let's look to God. As we find the altar prayer tonight, the altar prayer is open tonight. We give us an opportunity to look to Him. An opportunity to call on that wonderful name. That name, Jesus. That matches His name, Jesus. That matches His name, Jesus. Tonight, that wonderful name. Our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we call on you tonight. We trust in you. We look to you. We look to you. God, men and women have needs. God, we all have needs tonight. And who else can we go to but thee? We call on you tonight to supply that need. Whatever it may be. If you don't know him tonight, accept him. Believe what he did on the cross for you and I. For the entire world. He gave his life. Saved. The people can be saved and delivered from our sins tonight. Look at God. You want forgiveness? Look to God. He's the only one that can save. He's the only one that can forgive. He's the only one that can give us that born again experience. Look to God. If you need power tonight, power from high, look at God. Look to Him. Let Him feed with the Holy Ghost. If you need strength tonight, look to God. Look to God. Look to Him. You need help, I'm telling you. Pray to stick it close to the brother right now. He's a very present help in a time of need or in a time of trouble. Look to God tonight. Look to him. Whatever he is, call on him tonight. That's all for the place to pray tonight. Let's look to him. See if we can say it unto the Lord tonight. God bless you.
twice a year, actually. Twice a year, especially for the world to know. Crystals and Easter, he lets the world know, hey, I'm still alive. Hey, Amen. I'm, I'm the answer. And throughout the day, throughout the year, God continues to speak to hearts. We encourage you to look to him. Look at God. I'm telling you, you won't, you won't be disappointed. It's like, God's an awesome God. He fills that void that man is looking for. He meets that need. So many have. Let it be your God tonight. To the soon coming king is coming again. This is true as we sit here today. One day, again, the world will see him. Amen. And know that he is real. Let it be real to you now. Let it be real to your soul now. While there's still time. God bless our perfectly for the sea of this Sunday at 11 a.m. Come on out, come on out, and be with us here in the house of God. We look forward to celebrating. His birth, amen, the birth of Christ. Again, and truly we're blessed tonight to be able to do that. Before we close again, we want to give an opportunity to give. Uh, again, if you get up on the screen there for us, through our uh, church giving, our giving, and support the work of the Lord here. Amen. Again, we said it before, your tithe and offerings belong to God. Your tithe belongs to God. Ten percent, all Christians pay the tithe. Amen. And glad to give you the offering of the gross. Amen. If you believe in like tithe is important. Supposed to work in the ministry here. Amen. And truly, truly. That's how you get your blessing. And over and over and over again, you say, Man, look at God. Where did this come from? How did God supply it? Because He loves that you're forgiven. Amen. So you give unto Him, we truly will bless you. Again, through text to give as well, 347 229 9933. You can text that number. Type the word give. Or if you already set it up, you can text the dollar amount. And God, again, uh, it will respond back to you. And, and you can um, be able to give that way. Once you set up, it's automatically it comes out. Then you have do sale as well. Sale. Some of you have online baking. Go to sale. Use our church email as the point of contact. And again, it's so not the church, not the phone number, but the, the, the church email here. Do it that way. And also through our church website. Our church website, www.mintcc.org. And so we thank you for your giving. I give the Lord truly bless you. It is our prayer. Amen. We we'll ask um, Little Trey, come on up, Trey. Come on up. I said, I'm going to make him the lush today. Amen. Come on up. Come on up. Put this young man to work here. Amen. 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 So if you would pray and ask God to bless the offering, please. Jesus, thank you for letting us have the opportunity for us to give many chances for us to see you. And thank you for everything that you did. You give us a very bread and a very Breath, and thank you for giving us everything that we need from you, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.